if nature went to that extreme to make every grain of sand different, every snowflake different, how when it came to the human being and made us all alike? And so I began to think also, gee, no two people have the same fingerprints, or footprints, or lip prints, or ear prints. Your voice is unlike any other voice in the whole world. So why should this be good for everyone and this be bad for everyone? Could it not be that food that energizes give my, and gives my body health could cause sickness in someone else? Having a quite a strong background in blood pathology, I looked to the blood for a number of reasons. You know, you could live with, a, with one arm, you could live with one leg, you could live with one lung, you could live with one kidney, but you can't live without blood. So all of a sudden I began to lean very strongly to looking at the blood. Now we knew there were four blood groups. There was O, there was A, there was B, and there was AB. And as I began to make this study, I began to realize that O blood group, being told by anthropologists, was the first blood group to appear in the face of this earth. And then many millennia later appeared A. Now it's interesting because O blood group, even till today, is 52% of all the people of the world. And A is 38% of the people of the world. Then many, many millennia later appeared B, 8% of the people of the world. And then the last blood group to appear was AB, only 2% of the people of the world. And, and I, as I began to think, I began to realize that if O was the first blood group to appear, those had to be the hunters. And as I leaned quite strongly towards the vegetarian kingdom, it didn't work. When I gave them flesh and exercise, it did. And then I thought about the A. Could it not be that they're the gatherers? And if I lean quite strongly towards the vegetarian kingdom, they seem to do well. In the middle of the rota, best of both kingdoms, and A, B, uh, similar. And that's when I wrote my first book. book is One Man's Food, and it's the original research, 1956, 1957, till 1979. And this is based on the four blood groups, because that's all I thought was there, was four blood groups. In the 80s is when I wrote the second book, which was called The Dadamo Diet. And I think that was wrong, because this program is not a diet. It's a way of life. So I misinterpreted the book or gave it the wrong title. Uh, and it talks about sub-blood groups, which is wonderful. So this was a more in-depth study of the four blood groups. And I think uh, in the 80s, I started to do this research. And I think organized medicine hadn't discovered sub-blood groups until the turn of the century. So we were a little ahead of them, and we documented it. Just an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Is exciting because it's the whole, all the years of research, and most certainly is making its part, mark in the world because it's now published in Russia, it's published in England, in Poland, in the Ukraine, in Germany, uh, in France, and I believe shortly, possibly in, in Spanish. So it's beginning to take its place in the world, which makes me very happy to share this information with the world.